Hey guys, welcome back. This is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. And this video is going to be about the Monocore PS310. Now I've already done a video about this, well, lab bench power supply uh, since it's broken. But today uh, I want to take a new look at it since I found some things on the internet. Uh, I made a little checklist that I need to well, go off and hopefully we'll be able to locate the problem and we might be able to fix it. So I suggest we start by opening this thing up. It's quite heavy. Now there are four screws on each or two screws on each side so four screws in total and then the top cover will come off. Now off camera I've uh, taken a look at the thing and uh, I've discovered some little things but I don't think that uh, that will be useful. And what I'm firstly going to do is I'm going to clean the PCB. It's very dirty. I think that somebody has spilled something on the device. So let me get a uh, toothbrush. Get some alcohol on my toothbrush. Now it hasn't been plugged in for a while, so this is relatively safe. And I broke it resistor deck. So yeah, now we should definitely take out the PCB because it won't really work anymore. There were a few components that were likely to be faulty. Uh, I read online and I found the schematic finally. Well, this is the schematic for the PS303. Uh, but it's roughly the same uh, for this thing, except that this thing goes to 10 amps and this one goes to 3 amps. Hence the 3 and the 10 in the name. So let's locate that transistor. BC837. Four six four. It's not in here, but I do have another schematic. Yeah, there you go. Here it is. So it says VO. No, I've got a whole lot of uh, transistor replacements. So they say that you could just swap it out with another one. That happens to be in my little replacement kit. Is the BC547 and that's this one. Maybe I can desolder it without removing the PCB. My soldering iron is up to temperature. Only one leg to go actually, that went really well. There you go, cool, wow. I'm amazed by the, how well that went actually. And uh, let's try to solder it in. Nope. All right, so I guess I will have to remove the PCB. Uh, which is something I don't really want to do, but hey. Like so. Ah, cool. Here is our PCB. 
let's try to give it a bit of a better clean this time. which is not entirely successful, but so let's solar it. There you go, that's one transistor soldered in. The checklist. Oh, I suppose we just measure all of them. So, let's check. I suppose we start by this with this one and let's put it on diode. Yeah, this is just a straight. Is there a capacitor on this line as well? No, there isn't. The diodes all seem to be okay. The transistor also seems to be okay. Now there's another one over here, which also seems to be fine. Now, this big Elko 1500 microfarads, it's slowly increasing. Overload. Yeah, that's what I thought. Was a little too harsh on the extra extraction method, and the pins and the socket actually looks fine. Like that. Now this one is going to be a little bit more trickier to do with the extraction tool. Let's clean that. I can really get into the PCB cleaning right now, which is good. Because I'm definitely in need of one. For cleaning the IC, I've got another trick. Yeah, that's right, we're going to use a pencil eraser. This is a very good method of cleaning of corrosion for your contacts. And this will work on well, any metal surface. As you can see, they start shining immediately. So, let's try to clean the inner surface of the I see this is really look you can really see the difference you can see a nice shine over here that, yeah you can see a nice shine over here and not there and that's where the eraser reached and there it's hasn't been able to reach it. Now, you can't really do that eraser trick on a socket. So I'm just going to try to poke it a little. Let's heat it up and evaporate all the alcohol. And let's insert the IC back into its socket. Well, that fits very nicely actually. Cool, so the forum posters also mentioned the transistors at the back there are loads more of them but nevertheless we're still going to check them 
Oh, they're conveniently labeled the emitter and the base for us, I think. So this is the emitter, that's for sure. Yeah, I th don't think that that one's dead. A lot of shows the value. Hmm. This one doesn't know really what to do. And now the bottom one. Uh, trying to get the lead at the right point is really difficult. Yeah, that's all. That all seems to be good. Let's check this one again for comparison. Yeah, the, the transistors seem to be fine. Now, well, let's actually install this bad boy back in its position and check if the transistor swap and the cleaning made any difference. Yeah, I'm going to need my reference picture for this. Everything looks connected. I guess it's time for the well, smoke test. So let's turn that on. See what happens. Nothing. Just cool. And let's turn this on. Nothing happens. But I can see that a meter. Yeah, it's still having that fault. It's still on or off, basically. Current all the way down. So the thing is able to provide a maximum current of 10 amps. And my multimeter is conveniently able to handle maximum current of 10 amps. But it's set to current limit of zero. Which is not happening. Wow, the current regulation works. I wasn't expecting that to happen. This is a little bit of a uh, honky shonky uh, millimeter. But hey, it's able to withstand 20 amps unfused. But 20 amps is 20 amps. So now we'll be able to see how far this thing goes. Wow, 15 amps. That's really... Really a lot. And I'm confused by the fact that it only starts at... It, it starts regulating this knob at 5 amps. So... It looks like there's something wrong with the low voltage comparison. It, it only happens, the issue only happens at lower voltages. Because here, I can regulate the thing, well, very nicely actually. At the high voltage, and it also changes here. And that's not for the voltage knob. That, that's still either on or off. Yeah, it's getting warm. It's getting really hot, really hot actually. What is to be expected at 15 amps? At around 9 volts. That's a few hundred watts that it's pumping through. So, yeah, it's kind of working. But only at medium loads. And only the amp regulation is working, starting from five or six amps. And off camera, I um, did research on what was wrong and I noticed that the, um, you've got three poles on your potential meter. Whoa, this, the wire is hot, man. You've got, these wires are not rated for 20 amps, that's for sure. One kilovolt, yeah, I wouldn't trust them with one kilovolt either. Now I did a little research off camera and the reference voltage, you've got three poles, the 
ground, the minimum, the maximum and the actual value and the minimum value was not where it was supposed to be. So it is the, the next day and uh, we're continuing with the PS310 project because I really want to repair it because this thing is awesome, it had tons of power Ow. and it's freaking hot. I just turn it on, put a load on it. So in order to, to get a good measurement of the transistors that, that are at the back. So there are four transistors at the back, the 2 and 3055. Um, so four of those. Um, and in order to verify uh, if one's broken, you need to put a load on the uh, supply. A load of about one amp is enough. Uh, I didn't have a load of one amp so I grabbed an induction coil or magnetic coil it works okay. and now if I turn off the power supply it drops so there's definitely power coming through it's around 5 amps there are a few resistors over here four and you want to measure those uh, the voltage across them and if one uh, doesn't match the others then the transistor connected to that resistor is faulty and I suggest when you have one faulty transistor that you replace them all because then your whole system is uh, is matching. Let's actually measure the voltage across the resistors. So, so now the power supply is off. Let's turn it on and let's measure the load. Now, please be careful because the main transformer is right next to it. So be very careful. This one is zero. This one is 344 milliamps. Same for this side. Be very careful because the main transistor is next to it. This one is a little bit of a challenge without blocking the view. Let's record it. Oh. 358 milliamps. So this one is completely zero. This one is 344. Let's clear it. All right, this one. This one is 373. So they're all varying. So I think that there's more than one transistor that's uh, broken. So the next step would be to actually remove everything. But since it's powered five amps at 30 volts, I'm going to wait because the heat sinks at the back are rather hot. So yeah, I'll keep you updated. So I'm back. The thing has cooled down. So it's, let me first plug it actually. Might be a good idea. All right, so now let's remove these screws because that's what they're uh, holding in the little boards that you can see over here and over here. So we need to remove these boards. And in order to do that, we need to remove a few screws. And we only need to remove the screws that are holding in the transistors but please make sure to uh, save them because you'll need them later including the rubbers or the plastic I'm not sure what it is yeah that's plastic uh, you need that to isolate it from the case oh and a nut will fall out on the other side with a 
a little washer and you also need to secure that now only the top and bottom screws have those uh, crush uh, washers now in order to actually remove this board we also need to desolder the uh, transistors I think it's almost 30 or 40 year old solder oh there you go so that's one the last one it will be a lot uh, challenging hmm. that went also quite well they're not too hard to remove that amazes me actually now you do need to uh, keep the little orange cover because that uh, isolates the transistor casing for from the casing of the power supply which is well actually mandatory because the transistors the transistors case is the collector so if that uh, shorts out you won't be happy and we can move this out of the way for a second because we're going to measure the uh, transistors we're going to uh, we're going to measure them to see if we can find a uh, fault So 0, 0,517 millivolts and this one should also be this one 0, this one is low 488 millivolts, this one is 521 millivolts this one zero 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 so which one is it this one is completely dead this one is dead it doesn't do anything and it's possible that just one is dead and then the others are also failing so, yeah. Oh, it's. Let me try to measure the resistance. Oh, now this one does have a resistance. Or, oh no, it's my finger. Not all have a resistance. Which is really weird. Now, I think that these transistors are all messed up. And it's time that we put some new ones in there. And hopefully that will fix this little beast. Because it's an absolute beast. It's capable of outputting 300 watts. And, well, that's actually a little bit more than my uh, own lab bench power supply is capable of outputting. So I will keep you updated on the progress because I just ordered some brand new transistors. And of course when they arrive I will be installing that into the system to, uh, yeah, to check if it fixes the problem. So uh, I hope you stick around and uh, I'll keep you updated. So after opening the package and the newly arrived with the newly arrived transistors, I installed them onto the back side of the power supply. I did not yet solder them. So that is one. One side done. Now the other one. Needs to be done, and I need to feed in the solder. So now these two can be tightened like so, and I want to touch them one more time just to remove tension from the solder joint. 
So they're all well soldered right now. All the transistors are in. All the screws are in place. All the washers are in place. Everything is in place. And it's now time for the first test, which I'm very excited for, but also a little bit scared. So the mains is on and let's... So it is on, can't see any smoke. I can't see, I, the, the transistors are not heating up. I, but the issue is still there. What if we put a load on the output? So again, this is the, the magnetic coil. It's well capable of reaching 15 amps. It's not, it's still not able to regulate the voltage. So the LM723's arrived. The replacement parts for the current uh, CA723 power regulator chips. So let's find a way to remove them. I don't really care if they come out in one piece or not because they're going to be replaced anyway. All right, so they're both in. And let's plug it in. Will it work? Will it work? Well, everything is set to zero. Let's power it up. No magic smoke. I... This is a shame. This really is a shame. I was expecting it to work, but it isn't. When you switch or when you go to a certain value, it shoots all the way uh, all the way up. Well, things are getting pretty toasty in here whilst doing nothing. So I don't think that that's a good sign either, but it's not regulating. I can smell something getting hot, so that's not a very good sign. Yeah, it's this chip. Hmm. So I guess that uh, that's it for this uh, power supply. We might see some smoke. Exactly. So yeah, that didn't work out. There's a little bit more magic smoke. You know what? This thing is done. So yeah, I'll probably take everything out and convert it to an uh, LM317 based voltage uh, lab bench power supply. Uh. I still hope that you uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. If you find this video interesting and you want me to make such a LM317 power supply, please let me know down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey guys, this is Tim. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.